from the book of Romans chapter 12. Verses 1 and 2. Please follow as I read. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. This is the word of the Lord. Lord, we open up ourselves to you now. We free up our minds in your presence. Help us, Lord, to concentrate on you right now and all that you will say to us in this time. Holy Father, as you speak, cause that your word, Lord, will penetrate deep into our hearts, and indeed renew our minds. Let your Holy Spirit, Lord, minister to us in this time. Use the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord, to draw the unsaved unto you. And to draw those of us who are saved even closer to you, Lord. So that we can experience you today in a new and different way. Bless your words, Lord, to all our hearts. And take all the glory for yourself. In Jesus' name. Amen. I want to talk to us using the topic today, becoming more like Jesus. Becoming more like Jesus. One of the goals of Christians is to be Christ-like. That is to become like Jesus in all we say and in all we do. But most, if not all of us as Christians, will testify to the fact that this is something that does not happen automatically. And one of the things that we realize is that when we come to God through faith in Jesus Christ, it requires an intentional and an ongoing effort on our part to be like Jesus. And one of the questions that we probably ask ourselves from time to time is, what do we need to do? And in asking ourselves that question, we may ask ourselves another question. 
what is the most important step in the process to becoming like Jesus? Can I say to all of us gathered here today, save and unsave, that the real first step in becoming like Jesus is to turn to God in repentance. Surrender your life to him and have faith in Jesus. If you don't do that, you can't start. And so it is very important that all of us come to that realization that first and foremost, we must surrender our lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. When we do this, the Bible tells us that we are born again. Hallelujah, someone. And the Bible explains to us that this is not being born of your mother again. But this is what we call a spiritual birth. Which means that you no longer live in the physical realm. But more so in the spiritual realm. When you have been born again, your spirit, your inner man is awakened and is now connected to God, the source of all life. And I say to you, my brothers and sisters, that this new birth enables us to leave behind the old life that has separated us from God. And it makes possible for the new life in Christ. Can I also remind us that nothing else in the process of Christ is possible without a complete surrendering of your life. That's where it starts. That is the first and most essential step that we have to take. And then the Bible tells us that the moment we are born again, the Holy Spirit takes up residence in the new believer's life. And it is the Holy Spirit who connects us to the life of God. The Holy Spirit it is also who gives you and I the assurance of our salvation. He serves as our teacher in spiritual matters helping you and I to grow and mature as a believer. And guess what? It is the Holy Spirit who guides and equips us in the new life that has been given to us. Can I say to us this morning, without the presence of the Holy Spirit, Christ's likeness is not possible. Can I say it again? Without the presence of the Holy Spirit, Christ's likeness is not possible. Can I also remind us this morning, my brothers and sisters, my friend, that there is no substitute, absolutely no substitute for the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer. And so the indwelling of the Holy Spirit is an essential step also in becoming more like Jesus, a step that happens together with being born again. But hear me and hear me well. While being born again and indwelt by the Holy Spirit are essential to Christ's likeness, they do not guarantee that we will become like Jesus. There are many who are born again and are indwelt by the Holy Spirit. 
but they fail to live up to their calling. Yes. Many who have been saved for years. And yes, being saved, they are indwelt with the Holy Spirit. But they remain as spiritual infants. Afraid of what Christ-likeness will entail for them. So again, the question, my brothers and sisters, is what is the most important step we need to take to become more like Jesus? And I believe the answer to that question is best expressed in the passage that we just read. Romans 12 verses 1 and 2. Let me repeat it. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and the proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve that God's will is his good pleasing, and perfect will. It's a passage that we all, that most of us know, you know, and most of us can recite it. And most theolo theologians identify this passage as an identity of sanctification. And sanctification, according to Romans 12, 1 and 2, involves a surrendering and a transformation of one's life. And surrender, brothers and sisters, is essential for transformation. Surrendering is essential for transformation. And transformation leads to an assurance that God's way is the best way. There are a few points that I want to draw to our attention. Point number one, becoming a living sacrifice. Becoming a living sacrifice. This passage starts by Instructing us to offer our bodies as living sacrifice. This is not similar to being born again or in dwelt with the Holy Spirit. Instead, my brothers and sisters, it is a choice you and I make as a believer to commit ourselves fully to the Lord. This is not just by being born again, accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and at which point the Bible tells us uh, that the Holy Spirit comes into our life. But this is an intentional and deliberate choice that we have to make to commit ourselves fully to the Lord. In the Old Testament, we see where some sacrifices were made to God in atonement for sins, but other sacrifices were offerings given to God. And it is in this second type of sacrifice that Paul is now encouraging us to make. But rather than animal, as the Old Testament would do, Paul now directs you and I to give ourselves, to place ourselves on the altar, offering it unto God. And rather than dying like the animals that they would normally kill, Paul is saying that we should continue to live as one who has given their life to God to do with it as he sees fit. That's what it is. Offering ourselves as living sacrifice. Giving up our bodies to God. 
for God to do it as he sees fit. There's one problem with it though. There is one problem with being sacrifice. And it is that you and I have the tendency to climb down off the altar from time to time. Mm -mm. We can't keep quiet. And we can't stay on the altar. We have to come down. And it's because that is what happens and that is what will continue to happen. It makes it important that this offering of self as a living sacrifice is not a one-time event. And that is why you find Jesus saying to us in scripture in Luke chapter 8, he says to us that, look, anyone that come after me, let him first deny himself, take up his cross. Take up his cross. Because after you deny yourself, because of the fact that we are still living sacrifices, we have a tendency to go back. And so what Jesus was saying to his disciples when he says, take up your cross, is that he is reminding us that what we have to do and what we must do as his follower is to die a daily death to self. A daily death to self. A continual process of surrendering. Every moment of every day. You and I, who have surrendered our lives, must now choose to die to self and to live to God. Yes. Becoming a living sacrifice. That's what it requires. But that's not the only thing that becoming a living sacrifice requires. Becoming a living sacrifice also requires that we do not conform to the pattern of the world. That's what verse 2 of Romans 12 says. That we should build on being a living sacrifice. And for those who may not be aware, to conform to something is to adopt its shape and characteristics. In other words, to become like that thing. And we see that every day. We see that in the church that so many times, so many of us are still very much showing the ways and the lifestyle of the world that we should not conform to. The values and patterns of this world, our behavior, so often resembles and reflects what the world does and how the world go about doing things. And truth be told, that is not every pattern of the world is bad. There are some things that the world does that is right. But the reality, my brothers and sisters, my friends, is that the values and the action of this world are so many times at odds with God's desire for us. One of the problems that we have is that sometimes the world can't tell the difference between the Christian and the non-Christian. One of the problems that we have as Christians is that conformity comes easily to us. 
as it relates to the world. One of the problems that we have as Christians is that we always want to fit into the things of the world. One of the problems that we have as Christianity is that too many of us don't want to look different and to be different from the world. But that is what God has called us to. That is who we are called to be. We are called to be different. Dear to be different. From this world. People must be able to see the difference between us and the world. People must be able to see that we are indeed who we say we are. A child of God. Too many times. Too many of us. Have been weighed in the balance. And found wanting. We have been called. According to Second Peter, First Peter 2. We have been called to live. As foreigner and exiles in this world. We have been called to resist the pressure. To conform to this world. And therefore then to be. Different. And I say to us this morning, my brothers and sisters, that if you and I are looking and acting like the world around us, something is wrong. And we need to check ourselves. Check. With self. So we have been called. To be a living sacrifice. And in that call to be a living sacrifice. We've been told that we must not be conformed to the pattern of this world. But instead. That we must be Transformed. We must be transformed. And I don't know about anybody, but I know that when it comes to transformation, transformation involves changes. There is no way that you can say that you have been transformed when nobody knows the difference. Has got to be a change. Some of us might be familiar with a show that comes on TV and on cables. And the, young, the younger ones who like to watch cartoon will know about this show. It's called the Transformers. You know them, you know that show there? The Transformers, where you have these, these cars and trucks. Um, after a while, they transform into human-like figure. And when they transform into this human-like figure, they look nothing like the car and truck that they were before. Yes. They become something entirely different. That is the idea. That Paul is talking about here. Paul is saying that having come in contact with Jesus and now presenting our bodies as living sacrifice unto him, that the resulting factor of that is that there must be a complete transformation. We're not supposed to look anything like we looked before we came in contact with God. Not only are we not supposed to look it, we're not supposed to sound anything like that either. That song that we normally sing, it's a great change since I was born. And in that song, we talk about things I used to do 
I do them no more. Place I used to go, I go there no more. It's a great change. Even the very words that we used to speak, we don't speak them anymore. It's a great change. One of the problems I have with us as Christians is that in a real sense, we are like the Transformer movie. In a real sense, we are like the Transformer movie. Because the, 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 the downside to the Transformer movie is that when they change from a car into a human being, they then go back to the car to change into a car. And so many of us as Christians, we are flip-flopping. We are living a flip-flopping life. We are one instant. We are like Christ. And another instant, we are back like the world. Transformation for the child of God is meant to be one way. One way. Changing into Christ-likeness and never ever returning to the pattern of the world. No. Interestingly, while Paul speaks to us about not conforming to the pattern of the world, in using the word transform, Paul is now saying to us that we should not transform to be conformed to the pattern of God. That's what he's saying to us. So for those of us who like to conform, Paul said not wrong. Just, just move out of the conformity here where it resembles the world and come into this conformity that resembles God. That's what he's saying to us. Conform to the teachings of Jesus. Conform to walking in the way of love. Conform to the patterns and lifestyle that Jesus showed and demonstrated in the gospel when he walked this earth. That's what we are called into. In becoming more like Jesus. There must be no mistake. When people see us. Wherever them see us. In other words. It's not church alone. People supposed to come see we. And we look like Jesus. Hello somebody. It's not Sunday morning alone. People are supposed to see one will step out from our church. And that is when they're saying, mm, the person that look like Jesus. Oh, what Paul is saying to us, my brothers and sisters, is that when you leave church Sunday afternoon, you must still look like Jesus. When Monday morning come, you must still look like Jesus. Tuesday morning, Wednesday morning, Thursday morning, Friday morning, Saturday morning, you must still look like Jesus. This is not a dolly house. Christianity is not a dolly house. Where you just come and play. And in playing Dolly House, you pretend to be mommy and daddy. And then when Dolly House smash up, you're going back to being children. Not Dolly House. This is a real thing. That's what we are called to be. And Paul is saying to us, 
that if we are going to become like Jesus, then we have to become transformed and conform to the ways of God. But Paul is also saying to us, That in order for us to become transformed, we have to have a renewed mind. In other words, we must learn to think differently. Because a lot of times when we run into problems, it's with our thoughts. And not only that we run into problem with our thoughts, because our thoughts so often don't merely remain as thoughts, but they now become actions. And that's where the problem is. But what the Apostle Paul is saying to us is that as our thoughts become more God-centered, our words and actions will follow naturally. Amen, somebody. As our thoughts become more God-centered, our words and action will follow naturally. So the question right away now, that all of us must ask ourselves you know, is, are our thoughts God-centered? That's the question. And, and, and it's a question that every one of us can answer. And you know me. Just think about nobody else. Think about yourself. This message is not for the next person beside you, behind you, or in front of you. It's for you. As your thoughts become God-centered, so will your action and your words. And so what we have to look at daily is how much of our actions and how much of our words are God-centered. That's what we have to do. We have to measure that daily. Some might be asking the question, but pastor, how do we do that? How do we get our thoughts to become more God-centered? How can we change our thought patterns from those of this world to things of God? It's going to be different for each of us. Because each of us have different experiences. Hear Paul in Philippians 4 and verse 8. Hear Paul. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, Think on these things. A solution. Paul offers us a solution. Philippians 4 and verse 8. And this solution, my brothers and sisters, I dare say, is the key to renewing our minds. Philippians 4 verse 8. When our thoughts start to stray, Choose to think about something better. Amen, church. Because the reality is that our thoughts do stray. Mm -hmm. No, no, we're not so good. But Paul offers us a, a solution. He says, think about the things that are admirable. It is intentional. It not just happen automatically. Think about something better. 
something that is true, something that is noble, something that is right, something that is pure, something that is lovely, something that looks good in the sight of God. Think about it. And what Paul is saying to us is that this is what we must practice every day of our lives. This is what we must practice. We must practice to think about the things that are pleasing in the sight of God. You know, one of the problems that we have as Christians, there are many, but another one is that. And oftentimes, you know, we're not prepared to admit it. But I have been observing and I realize that a major challenge that we have as Christians is that very often, without us even realizing it, the things that we do and the things that we say are more to satisfy our appetite than our spiritual integrity. Hallelujah. We feel good about what we do. We feel good about what we say. But the question is, did God get the glory? Did God get the glory? We need to check who it is that we are giving the glory in the things that we do and the things that we say. Because our sole purpose, my brothers and sisters, in becoming more like Jesus is to always give God the glory. What's our sole purpose? And I find that too many times that is not the case. That is not the case. We have what is called reflexive action. We act without thinking. As a child of God, we can't do that. You and I can't afford to behave like the world where we are just thinking about how we will respond to what happened to us. We have to stop and think. In my response, will God get the glory? That's what Paul is encouraging us to do. That we take a new look at how we handle the renewal of our minds. Because the bulk of our problems lies with our minds. If our minds are not renewed... Our lives will not experience the transformation that is necessary for us to become more like Jesus. And can I tell you, even though Paul was speaking to the Christian here, it is also essential for the unsaved. Because guess what? It is a renewal of your mind. It is a new way of thinking that is going to bring you into a relationship with God. If you continue to think the way of the world, if you continue to look the way of the world, you are going to remain an enemy of God. You have to make up your mind. You have to make a decision that you want to be different from the world. It is a renewal of the mind that is going to bring about that. And so I encourage you, my brothers and sisters, on this 19th day of March, that if you want to become more like Jesus, that you have to offer yourself as a living sacrifice. And in offering yourself as a living sacrifice, to become more like Jesus, you're going to have to surrender fully to the Lord. You're going to have to not be conformed to the world. You're going to have to be transformed and become conformed to God. And you're going to have to 
have a renewed mind. It's not going to be possible if you're not prepared to do that. You're going to remain the same as you are. I want to close with the word of the hymn writer. The hymn writer catch the rake. And so he penned these words. More about Jesus would I know. More of his grace to others show. More of his saving fullness see. More of his love who died for me. He recognized what he needs. More about Jesus, he says, let me learn. More of his holy will discern. Spirit of God, my teacher be. Showing the things of Christ to me. More about Jesus in his word. Holding communion with my Lord. Hearing his voice in every line. Making each faithful saying mine. More about Jesus on his throne. Riches in glory, all his own. More of his kingdom's sure increase. More of his coming, prince of peace. More, more about Jesus. More, more about Jesus. More of his saving fullness. See. More of his love who died for me.